Hi guys, Glader here. Today we've got another episode of the Spyro Unity 3D stuff that I've been doing. And today's going to be an interesting episode because I'm actually publishing the tools to do what you see in this video. I'm going to actually walk you through how to use them and stuff, and how to bring a map into Unity 3D and get it all colored and stuff. So if you haven't seen the last video, which I recommend you go watch, I have solved this color blending issue. You can call them seams, whatever you want to call it. And that's a feature on this tool that I don't think other tools that are public do, and that is to blend the vertex colors. And I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like in a second. We'll go over here in the scene view, and while that runs, because it'll take a second, I'm going to bring you over to the GitHub. Now, this is free, it's public, it's open source, and the link is going to be in the description. Now, just go to the Release tab and grab a bunch of Unity packages there. You only need either the DLL or the source, and then I also recommend you use the shaders, but you can always use some other ones if you wanted. And there's, you can download those packages or zip or whatever. So once you've got those and you've imported them, I'll show you what you got to do with them to bring in a map. So now you can see you can see that this is smoothly blended. There's a 3ds Max uh, importer exporter by Desert Monkey. I can't remember if his does this sort of blending. I've it's been so long since I've used it a long, long time. So it might, but I don't think any any tool currently does. But I could be wrong. And just let me show you what it looks like without it, so you can really tell the difference. And you can see it looks pretty bad without it. So we're going to import a new map in here. And this is 59 in the game files. I've got it already imported. Um, and I don't know what it is, I just grabbed it by chance a few minutes ago when I tried to record this the first time. Uh, first thing we're going to want to do with those tools is you want to go up to Spyro, Glader Spyro Tools at the top, open the UVW Flipper, and then you're going to want to find the one that you've imported, so just type the number of the thing that you imported. You want to find the M, the M version, which has the vertex colors. You want to generate a UV Flip version. Now the reason for that I won't get into, but it's a limitation of Unity 3D. That's the reason we have to do this. It's an annoying step, but you only have to do it once. Next we're going to actually bring in the, the actual scene. There's a few ways that you can scale this or bring it in. But this is how I'm going to do it. I recommend once you bring it in, to create a prefab. I have no idea what this is, so I'll just call it that. Go ahead and add that here. So now that we've got this in here, I don't really know what this is, but it, that doesn't matter. And then you want to go up and open Later Spyro's Tools and go to Texture and Vertex Color Combiner. Now there's a there's a few ways you can actually use this tool, but this is the recommended way. I recommend you target a prefab in the scene, and then you're going to want to add the M for this one, so 59M. And then on the third field, you're going to want to add the UV swap version, and then we're just going to hit combined. Okay, it finished applying the vertex colors, but we currently don't have a shader that supports that. So we're going to go back into here, create a new material. We're going to call it Level 59 Map Material. Great name. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this, scroll down, hold shift, click there. And we're just going to set this in the inspector so everyone it's, it's using that material on all of these chunks now. And then I'm just going to go to the Spyro tab and select our map shader. And wow, there you can see our vertex colors. Now you'll see these aren't blended at all. It looks very ugly. 
because of the, how these colors are blended. But I'm going to show you a feature on how to fix that. You just click a box. First, I think we should probably bring in the textures. I totally forgot. There's a few steps you're going to have to do with those to get them to work. So we need to find texture 59. Okay, great. We bring those in. And Spiral Wow Model Viewer, or whatever it's called, generates two versions. So you're going to want to disable, you want to click on both, disable MIP maps, set it to clamp, although it doesn't matter, change it to no filter, point filter mode, then hit apply. And now you'll actually be able to use these without these ugly UV scenes. So let's go ahead and apply this to the material. You're going to see them in the editor, but you won't see them in the game view. And I can show you that by bringing you over here. In game view, you will only see these seams if you're using MSA. MSAA. So go ahead and turn off the multi-sampling, anti-aliasing, sorry. Go ahead and turn that off. And now you don't see any seams, which is good. Can't use MSAA. I recommend going to forward, by the way, as well, because we're not going to be using any lights at all. We've got these vertex lights, which are nice. You're still going to see those in the editor, though, okay? So there's nothing I can do to help with that. So let's remove the texture so that you can see the difference with what we're about to do. We're going to enable vertex blending, so it's going to take a little bit longer than the first time. But once it's done, you should see a few of these places clean up a bit. Now we're almost done. I mean, we've got the scene in. Wow, look at that. Wow, that is much smoother and much better. That is great. So now what we're going to do is... Uh, don't leave the video, by the way. There's still some important stuff here. I'm going to show you... You can do some stuff with the vertex lighting, so you can make the vertex lights or colors be very, very bright. Oh, sorry, that's a flat ambient field. That's You can make the flat ambient very bright. I recommend going to the lighting settings and not using this at all. Or you can increase how bright the vertex colors will actually be. Now, I find that, that these settings work well for me, but you can always change them. But next, we need to actually know how to make this save between loads of Unity. Because right now, it wouldn't work. If you reloaded Unity, the vertex colors would disappear. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to enable Save Separate Meshes. And what this is going to do is it's going to... This is a destructive operation, so it's going to change this object. Okay, so just want to let you know. It's going to change it a little bit. So we're just going to combine. And what it's going to do is it's going to set each chunk's mesh filter, a new mesh, copy of the mesh asset, and then it's going to save it in the folder that all these other objects are in. And you can see the mouse wheel spinning right now. That's what it's actually doing. So it shouldn't take too much longer. Then I'll show you what that looks like in... Then we're essentially done. I guess we could add the skybox. That could be fun. We'll add the skybox. Alright, so you see a new folder appeared. It's going to contain all the mesh objects, mesh assets. And so, yeah, now you're actually pretty golden here. Um, this, this shader supports light maps. It supports pretty much anything the standard shader supports. So you can actually bake lighting and get some interesting shadows here. So let me see if I can't do that at a real low resolution. We'll use the progressive light mapper because it might be a little bit faster. We'll do three, maybe do 300 samples. This is going to be pretty low quality. But you'll get to see what I'm talking about. Oh, wow, that was quick. Yeah, we need to set this as static. I recommend that for static batching as well. There we go. This will be a little bit different. And we'll change this to baked. This is probably a waste of time. I really apologize. But I just want to show you that Spyro Shader supports 
uh, quite a few things. All right, so while that is baking, hopefully this captures the video properly. I have a feeling it might not. Okay, so. And notice you have these seams here. That's this kind of an issue with the light baking. Higher resolution padding might fix that. But there's nothing that we can do right now. I just want to show you that. We'll go to the big light map. That you, you can get lights. Um, this is at a very re low resolution bake, so you can have all sorts of problems. But you definitely, definitely have bakes. Definitely can have bake light maps as well. But you'll notice that there's some weird issues with the UVs. So what that actually is, is we're, we're going to go ahead and reverb. And this is important to show you, because you might want to change back to the original mesh without the vertex colors. So what that actually is, is if you go and click on the here, you'll notice that we haven't generated any light maps, UVs. So let's go ahead and do that now. That's a pretty important thing to do if you want to have light mapping support on these objects. That's good. Obviously it doesn't look very good right now. But there's another thing that we want to go ahead and do. And that is on both of our M's, we want to disable welding and disable mesh optimization. This can cause some issues, so I just recommend doing it. Sorry it's a little out of order, but I do mention this in the README. So now we can actually regenerate these. I won't save them though, so that we can save some time. And then we'll rebake the lighting real quick. Should only take a few seconds. You can see that we're getting a much better result already. And those most of those UV issues were a result of not having light map UVs. And it's almost done. And then you're going to see something pretty cool. Um, I'd recommend saving the prefab after you've applied the material. That's why we don't see anything. Sorry, there's a few mistakes in this video. Hopefully you guys understand. Okay, wow, look at that. This is a very low resolution bake. So what you're going to get is very low resolution shadows, but you actually can get shadows now. So if you actually wanted shadows, you can get them. You can get interiors that are a little bit darker right here on the outside. You can do this with vertex colors as well, but changing them is kind of a hassle. So that's a feature that is supported. It is supported. Also, vertex lights should work, and pixel lights and deferred rendering path. So yeah, let's go ahead and add the skybox real quick. So we'll just add this. Um, wow, that's far away. Okay, I can't really see the skybox, but it looks like it's covering our map. So let's go ahead and do the same thing. You'll see that once you get the hang of using this, you'll be able to pretty much do whatever you want pretty quickly. So we need the 59 one, and then we need the flip version. Let's go ahead and create a flip. And again, I'd recommend changing the import settings, but just for speed, I'm going to skip that right now. Okay, we've vertex blended, so let's create a new material. Level 59 skybox. Great. 
and I really do recommend you go through the same steps as earlier, but I'm just trying to skip through because this video is kind of feeling long already. Great, so now let's select the new sheet. Huh? Wow, would you look at that. Um, we're a bit too large. I need to rotate a bit, but holy moly, doesn't that look nice? Really does look like a spiral map now, huh? Is that a little bit of post? And let's go fly around. Isn't that neat? Got some decent, you know, you got some shadowing, which is cool, which is pretty cool. And yeah, so whatever this is, you've got it. With vertex colors, with a working skybox, in Unity, quickly, you know, and then you can do whatever you want with it. But yeah, th that's the tools. I've shown you how to download them, how to use them. If you have questions, post them in the comments in the YouTube section. If you have issues, go ahead and open an issue on the GitHub, I'll go ahead and answer it, even if it's not like an issue with the code, I'll, I'll answer it like it's support. But yeah, that's the video, other than showing you some of the material properties on the skybox. We can change the color just a little bit. And you can also change the intensity, if you felt like it. So yeah. That's the video. You can now bring spiral maps into Unity, get them rendering, get the vertex colors working, and you can do that all without 3D modeling software now. Again, you can see these light map seams. That's not it's not an issue with bringing these into Unity. That's just uh, crappy low resolution light mapping, and also just general issues with UVs and light mapping in general. It's not related to Spyro or this importer. So thanks for watching, guys. I'm so sorry that this video was so long, but now you should be able to live your dreams of bringing Spyro 1, also probably 2, though I haven't tested it, and probably 3, although I haven't tested it, into Unity 3D. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, I'm going to keep this updated and probably make a few more videos about this, especially if I get any new features. Or, yeah, links are going to be in the description. Thanks for watching, guys.